Hello, boys and girls. For the last time, I am doing uh, your Bible lesson for Sunday morning. And today I wanted to share with you some more interesting animal facts from this wonderful book. If you have not purchased this book, you should get it. Tell your parents it's great. Indescribable by Louis Giglio. Uh, it's all about God and science. And um, you can order it off of Amazon even. Um, I would like to tell you about some facts about some interesting creatures. Today we're going to talk about body weight. Oh, wonderful subject. Um, but I learned some things about some different creatures this week as Xander and I were doing some of our devotions. First of all, did you know that the ant that we talked about last week or the week before, I forget which one, they can lift up to 50 times their body weight. That's why you can see an ant going along and carrying a leaf or a piece of bread or some kind of food. An ant weighs very, very little, obviously, but they can carry 50 times their weight, 50 times their body weight. Another interesting insect that can carry way more than its body weight is the rhinoceros beetle. Now you should look up a picture of this. If you don't know what one of them looks like, they have like pincher things that stick out, sort of look like the horn on a rhinoceros. And so I think that's why they're called the rhinoceros beetle. They can lift a hundred times their body weight. And if you want to compare that to like ourselves, that would be like you lifting something or maybe your dad lifting something that weighs about nine tons. Okay, now how much is a ton? A ton is 2,000 pounds. So comparing, now we're comparing proportionately. That doesn't mean our rhinoceros beetle can, can um, lift 18,000 pounds, but comparatively, it can lift, according to its body weight, the same amount as if a person lifted nine tons or 18,000 pounds. Pretty amazing. Um, another thing you can think of to compare it to is a polar bear weighs about a half a ton, okay? So polar bear weighs about a thousand pounds. So you could compare that to lifting 18 polar bears. Yeah, right? Okay, another beetle that's called the dung beetle, D-U-N-G, just a little insect. The reason it's called the dung beetle, if you don't know what dung is, dung, another word for dung is feces or poop. The beetle eats that. That's why it's called the dung beetle, all right? It can pull up to 1,000. 141 times its body weight. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? And then one more insect. There's an orb spider and uh, it's called the Nephila orb weaver spider. Orb spiders are the ones that weave the really fancy um, webs that you see 
out and about. This particular one, the Nephila orb spider, which I'll spell that for you in case you want to look this up. It's N-E-P-H-I-L-A. I'll show you. There's a little picture of it right here. That spider right there. Its nets are so strong that people in the South Pacific use them as fishing nets. Again, amazing, huh? God can pack a lot of power and strength into tiny little packages. But the more important thing is that he packs an unbelievable amount of power and strength inside you. Because when you decide to follow God and become one of his children, he packs his spirit in you. And that's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. So it is an indescribable gift, but it's also a huge responsibility. God expects you to take good care of your body. He also expects you to honor him by not trying to uh, use your body to sin something that that you could um, use an example of that would be you don't talk back to your parents or you try not to use your mouth to say um, mean things or gossip about somebody or put somebody down or make fun of somebody or letting your eyes watch things that you shouldn't watch. King David even said, I will put no unclean thing before my eyes. That's in the book of Psalms. So as a child of God, your body is packed with the power, strength, and presence of God's spirit. Just ask him to help you to use your body to honor him and do what he wants you to do. The other animal that I wanted to mention to you today is the eagle. And if you've ever heard the expression, eagle eye, that means somebody has a really keen sense of sight. Well, the reason we use that expression is because an eagle's sight is four times better than ours. Four times better. And so the eagle can see well. The eagle can also soar above um, the air currents and the way that God designed it, its wings use the wind um, to carry it along. And there's a scripture in Isaiah 40 that says, those that wait on the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Okay, to end our time together, I want to read you one last story. This is one of my favorites by Max Lucado. It's called The Children of the King. And you are all children of the king. And that's why I want to share this story with you. A long time ago, in a land much like your own, there was a village, and in this village lived five orphans, a lonely family of fatherless children. They had banded together against the cold. One day, a king learned of their misfortune and decided to adopt them. He decreed that he would be their father, and he planned to come for them. All the people in the land thought it odd that the king should adopt these children. He already had many people to care for. Why does the king want them? The people would ask. But the king had his reasons. When the children learned that they had a new father and their father was the king no less and the king was coming to visit, they went wild with excitement. When the people of the village learned that the children had a father and their father was the king and that the king was coming to the village, they were terribly excited as well. 
they went out to see the children and told them what to do. You need to impress the king, they explained. Only those with great gifts to give will be allowed to live in the castle. The people didn't know the king. They just assumed that all kings want to be impressed. So these are pictures of the people telling the children what they need to do, that they need to impress the king. So the children worked long and hard preparing their offerings. One boy who knew how to carve determined to give the king a wonderful work of wood and art. He set his knife against the soft skin of the elm and whittled. The small blocks of wood came alive with the eyes of a sparrow or the nose of a unicorn. His sister decided to present the king with a painting that captured the beauty of the heavens, a painting worthy to hang in the castle. Another sister chose music as her way to impress the king. For long hours she practiced with her voice and mandolin. Village people would stop at her window and listen as her music took wings and soared. And yet the fourth child set out to turn the king's head with his wisdom. Late hours would find him with his candle lit and his books open. Geography, mathematics, chemistry. Surely a sage such as the king would appreciate all his hard work. But there was one little girl who had nothing to offer. She was the youngest. Her hand was clumsy with the knife. Her fingers were stiff with the brush. She opened her mouth to sing, but the sound was hoarse. She was too dull to read. She had no talent. She had no gift. All she had to offer was her heart, for her heart was good. She spent her time at the city gates watching people come and go. She would make pennies by grooming their horses or feeding their animals. A stable girl she was. A stable girl with no stable. But she had a good heart. She knew beggars by name and took time to pet each dog. She welcomed home the travelers and greeted the strangers. How was your journey? Tell me what you learned on your visit. How is your husband? Do you enjoy your new work? She was full of questions for people because her heart was big and she cared about people. But since she had no talent and no gifts, she grew anxious that the king would be angry. So she went to her brother and asked, would you teach me to carve? Sorry, I have much work to do. I haven't time for you. The king is coming, you know. So the girl put away her knife and picked up a brush and went to her sister, the artist. She found her on a hill painting a sunset on a canvas. You paint so well, said the girl who had the big heart. I know, the painter answered. Could you share with me your gift? Not now, the sister responded with her eyes on her palette. The king is coming, you know. The girl with no gift then remembered her other sister, the one with the song. She'll help me. But when she arrived at her sister's house, she found a crowd of people waiting to listen to her sister sing. Sister, she called. Sister, I've come to listen and learn. But her sister couldn't hear. The noise of the applause was too loud. Heart heavy, the little girl turned and walked away. Then she remembered her other brother. She took a book with small words and big letters and went to Sam. I have nothing to offer the king, she said. Could you teach me to read so I might show him my wisdom? Her brother didn't speak. He was lost in thought. She spoke again. Could you help me? I have no talent. Go away, said her brother, the scholar, scarcely moving his eyes from the text. Can't you see I'm preparing myself for the coming of the king? So the little girl went away sorrowfully. 
She had nothing to give. She returned to her place at the city gate and took up her task of caring for people's animals. After some days, a man in merchant's dress came to the small town. Would you feed my donkey? He asked the girl. The orphan jumped to her feet and looked into the brown face of a man who had traveled far. His skin was leathery from the sun and his eyes were deep. A kind smile from beneath his beard warmed the girl. There she is at the gate. And then here comes the man who asked her to feed his donkey and water his donkey. That I can, the girl answered, and she eagerly took the animal to the trough. Trust him with me. When you return, he will be groomed and fed. Tell me, she asked as the donkey drank, have you come to stay? For only a while. Are you weary from your journey? That I am. Would you like to sit and rest? The girl motioned to a bench near the wall. The tall man with the dark skin sat on the bench, leaned against the wall, closed his eyes, and slept. After a few minutes, he opened them and found the girl sitting at his feet, looking at his face. She was embarrassed that he had caught her staring. She turned away. Have you sat there long? He asked. Yes. What do you seek? Nothing. You seem to be a kind man with a peaceful heart. It's good to be near you. The man smiled and stroked his beard. You are a wise girl, he said. When I return, we will visit more. The man did return, and quite soon. Did you find whom you sought? The girl asked. That's another way for saying, did you find who you were looking for? I found them, but they were too busy for me. What do you mean? Those I came to see were too busy to see me. One was a woodsmith rushing to complete a project. He told me to return tomorrow. Another was an artist. I saw her sitting on a hillside, but the people below said she did not want to be disturbed. The other was a musician. I sat and listened to her music. When I asked to talk with her, she said she had no time. The other I saw had left. He has moved to the city to go to school. The girl's eyes widened. But you don't look like a king, she gasped. I try not to, he explained. Being a king can be lonely. People act strangely around me. They ask for favors. They try to impress me. They bring me all their complaints. But isn't that what a king's for? Asked the girl. Certainly, responded the king, but there are times when I just want to be with people. Be with my people. There are days when I want to talk to my people, to hear about their day, laugh a bit, cry some. There are times when I just want to be their father. Is that why you adopted the children? That's why. Children like to talk. Adults think they have to impress me. Children don't. They just want to talk to me. But my brothers and sisters were too busy? They were. But I'll come back. Maybe they'll have more time another day. Would you like to ride on my donkey to the castle? And so it happened that the children with many talents, but no time, missed the visit of the king. While the girl whose only gift was her time to talk became his child. And that is the 
Children of the King by Matt Cicado. Again, that's kind of a modern parable and you can spend some time talking with your parents about what that means, who's the king, who's our king, what he wants from us. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful summer. Um, get outside and enjoy the birds and the bees and the insects and the creatures that God has made, the trees and the flowers. If you can go on hikes and um, bike rides and walks, um, just remember every day to thank God for, for making the world so beautiful for us. I know it's going to be a different kind of summer and you may not be able to be um, doing some of the things that you want to do, but look for the good, look for the positive, and think of ways that you can bring a smile and a kind word to somebody else each day, including your mom and dad, because they like to hear that too. Okay? I love you guys. God bless you, and hopefully I'll see you um, in the church building in a couple weeks. Bye.